Hey folks, my name is Ravish and welcome back to another video in the series of Container for Beginners. Now, if you're watching this video for the first time, this video is a part of a series known as Containers for Beginners. And in today's video, we are going to talk about five things that you need to know before you deep dive into containers. Now, why these five things are important? Because whenever you go for an interview or whenever you go to deep diving sessions of Docker or containers, you need to know these five things. And in this video, we're going to talk about all these five things. All right. So, uh, uh, before moving further, please subscribe to the channel because that would really support me to create more content like this. And it's free for you, but that would really help me to grow. All right. So without further ado, let's dive right into the video. Okay. So the topics for today are the first one would be virtualization. We're going to talk about that. The next thing we're going to talk about is virtual machine. What exactly it is? Why do we need it? Then we'll talk about hypervisor, the definition, how it is used, what is the function. Then we'll talk about the containers in brief. And then at the end, we're going to talk about containers versus virtual machine. So what are the difference? Why do we need container and why do we need virtual machine? And what was the previous one, how it evolved and everything about it. All right. So let's dive right into it. Okay. So virtualization is a technology that allows multiple virtual instances of an operating system or application to run on a physical single machine with each instance being isolated from the others. The physical machine, also known as the host, provides the necessary resources such as processing power, memory, storage, and networking connectivity to all the virtual instances, which are known as guests or virtual VMs. Virtualization allows for greater flexibility and efficiency in computing by enabling multiple operating systems and applications to run on a single physical machine. This can result in cost savings by reducing the number of physical machines required as well as enabling better utilization of resources by allowing them to be shared between multiple VMs. Now there are several types of virtualization including full virtualization. So what exactly is full virtualization? A type of virtualization in which the guest operating system runs on the top of virtualization layer which emulates the underlying hardware. The next one is para virtualization, a type of virtualization in which the guest operating system is modified to run on a top of virtualization layer that provides direct access to the underlying hardware. And the third one is containerization. In containerization, a form of virtualization that allows for the creation of multiple isolated instances of an operating system or application known as containers which share the same host operating system and kernel. So this is the diagram that you can see. See, this is the traditional one and this is a virtualization. So I hope you have understood this part. Some popular virtualization technologies include VMware, Hyper-V, VirtualBox, KVM and Docker. So if you will go through the other playlist, you might have an idea of VirtualBox or Hyper-V. I've explained in the other playlist in my uh, in, on my channel. All right. So let's dive in right, right into the next one. So the next one is hypervisor. So what exactly is a hypervisor? A hypervisor also known as a virtual machine monitor VMM is a software layer that enables the creation of management of virtual machines on a physical host machine. The hypervisor sits between the physical host machines hardware and guest operating systems running each VM providing a layer of abstraction that allows multiple VMs to share the physical resources of the host machine, such as CPU, memory, storage, and network interfaces. There are two types of hard, uh, hypervisors, basically. The first one is a bare metal or a type one hypervisor. These hypervisors run directly on the host machine's hardware and provide a layer of abstraction between the hardware and the VMs. Examples of type one hypervisor include VMware ESXi, Microsoft Hyper-V, and Citrix Zen Server. There is other, another one which is type 2 or hosted hypervisor. These hypervisors run on the top of host operating system and provide a layer of abstraction between the host operating system and the VMs. Example of type 2 hypervisors include Oracle VirtualBox, VM Work, VMware Workstation and Parallel Desktop. So you can see according to this diagram and credits to Stacks Scale because I have taken this picture from their website. So this is a server over here. Here is an OS. Here is a hypervisor. First one is a bare metal and this is the OS. And the other one hypervisor is over here for the OS. Okay. So basically you can say that hypervisors enable efficient use of hardware resourcing by allowing multiple VM to share the same physical hardware while providing each VM with its own virtual hardware environment. This makes it possible to run multiple operating systems and applications on a single physical machine 
enabling better resource utilization and flexibility in deploying some software applications okay so next one is a virtual machine so a virtual machine can also be known as vm what exactly is a virtual machine a virtual machine is a software implementation of a computer system that can run programs and applications like a physical machine a vm consists of a complete operating system including its own virtualized hardware resources such as cpu memory storage and network interfaces which are managed by a hypervisor or a virtual machine monitor that sits between the physical host hardware and the vms multiple vms can run simultaneously on a single physical machine allowing for better utilization of hardware resources and providing greater flexibility for development testing and deployment of the software application vms can be used for variety of purposes including software development and testing server consolidation cloud computing and disaster recovery some popular virtualization technologies for creating and managing vms include vmware hyper v virtualbox and kvm so you can see this diagram over here here is the vm and here is an hypervisor which we just discussed two few minutes back and you can create any number of virtual machines over here and they are sharing the storage the compute the memory network and uh, this is all a physical server and this is an example of type 1 virtualization all right so that's about it now let's talk about the containers which is the one uh, most talked about thing so what exactly is a container so containers are a form of virtualization technology that allow developers to package an application along with all its dependencies and configuration files into a self-contained portable unit that can run consistently across different environment so you won't have a problem like when a developer says it runs on my machine why is it not running on your machine or a tester can say that it is running on my machine why it is not running in your machine so that can be avoided container use operating system level virtualization to isolate the application from the underlying host system allowing multiple containers to run on a single host without interfering with each other each container includes its own file system runtime environment and network stack which are all isolated from the host system and the other container so you can see that infrastructure is over here there's a host operating system and docker is an example of it we're not going to deep dive into any of these topics right now because this is more of a overview kind of a series but we are going to create a separate series for a docker for kubernetes and for other things all right so here you can see that app a app b app c and till app f they, this is all containerized containerized application okay so the final thing that uh, which you already know that containers have become increasingly popular in the recent years because they provide a lightweight and a flexible way to deploy the manage application in different environments from development to production okay so let's talk about container and virtual machine so the first thing that we can talk about is architecture so vms virtualize the hardware layer running a complete operating system instance including kernel and drivers on a virtual set virtualized set of physical resources containers on the other hand virtualize the operating system layer sharing the host kernel and libraries while isolating the application and its dependencies in a lightweight package the next thing is resource utilization VMs require a hypervisor to create and manage VMs, which creates an additional layer of overhead. As each VM must run its own operating system instance, this makes VM more resource intensive and slower to start up than containers. And containers, on the other hand, share the host operating system, so they require fewer resources and are faster to start up. The third one is isolation, which is the most important thing. VMs provide complete isolation between the host machine and the guest operating system and application. On the other hand, containers on share the host operating system and kernel, which means that there is less isolation between the container and the host machine. The last one should be portability. VMs can be moved between different host machines with, with different hardware and operating systems, making them highly portable. Containers, however, are typically designed to be deployed on a specific operating system and architecture which can limit their portability so in summary we can say that vm provide full isolation between guest and host machine but require more resources and are less portable while containers offer lightweight and fast application isolation but share the host kernel and offer less isolation from the host machine the choice of technology depends on the specific use case and requirements of the application so that's it for the video folks I hope you have understood everything. If there is anything, feel free to comment below. I know this is just an overview of these technologies. In the upcoming videos, we are going to do a more deep dive into it. 
all right so if there is anything feel free to comment below and we will address that so thanks guys and i'll see you in the next one